Welcome everyone. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician here to host the Market Buzz. This show looks at weekly setups across the U.S. market. Using the tools available on stock charts, we'll look for long time frame trades. Please subscribe to my articles and Twitter feed for more information throughout the week. And we continue to try and test this 3000 level. We've been going at it since uh, last, what, Wednesday or so. Um, lots going on here as the market tries to get through earnings period where we know earnings are going to go down, but the market wants to keep going up. So uh, quite an interesting little gap in the in the system. I want to cover off the transports. Obviously, CSX came in uh, awfully poor. Um, CP Rail uh Canadian Pacific Rail came in unbelievably good. So the two opposites are sitting there trying to balance out the railways. But I have some issues on the railways, and I'm going to bring that up. Um, general market thoughts here. We're starting to see a little bit of a breakdown in the uh, PPO that we've uh, been watching since June 1st off that low. And so there's a little bit of reason for, uh, I don't want to say anxiety, but just keep watching it because we're going to go through earnings options expiration on Friday. And we've got obviously the tech companies, the software sectors on a big roll. And it feels a lot like 1995, 97, 98, where the software companies just ignored the rest of the economy and just kept uh, humming along. And that's what kept everything afloat. So um, not that that's bad. That's great. Uh, I'm just pointing out that, you know, a lot of the other stuff is quite odd um, and, and want to get into that with you and just try to explain why I got some mixed messages and what I want to worry about here. First of all, um, you know, one of the questions I have is we're up 28% so far this year. We were up as much as 28.5 off the December low. So in eight months, we're up 30%. And I know there's a whole choir out there that thinks we can go up another 30% before year end, um, up to 3250, 3500, whatever. Um, I'm not picking any targets out there. I just like to keep watching the data as we go. But the, the data that I'm seeing uh, from the economy, you know, still okay. Retail sales were way up. Uh, we're having some of that stuff is really good. I don't see anything imminent. I think the big thing that puzzles me is the Canadian market. If I just change this to the TSX, um, normally breaks down before the US market. And this is the problem. We, we haven't gone anywhere in almost six weeks. And so we're starting to break our little uptrend that we had going here off the June 1st low. And if I just roll out this tape a couple of years, and again, the idea being weak markets will break before strong markets. And so the TSX actually topped in July of 2018, whereas the U.S. market topped in September. So kind of two months later. And as you can see, we topped back in April and now it's two and a half months later. And we haven't, um, we haven't broken down yet either. Um, what you'll notice here on this chart is we took a little time here in August, we started to break down. And then in September, when everything fell apart in the US, the Canadian market was already into a downtrend. I wouldn't say we're into a downtrend yet, but we definitely have support sitting here on this. And this is a percentage graph, the price levels don't really matter. But as you can see, just going back for two years, we've been struggling to get through this level. And so if we started to break down from here, I'd be a little more concerned. So that's one of the issues I've got. Now I've got some other things that I want to show you that are more pessimistic. And the only reason I want to ballast all of the bullish uh, commentary is with some other data that suggests at least don't be uh, effervescent in your optimism because we are sitting up 30% already. And again, if I change this um, S&P, this to the S&P 500. Uh, you could just see this is up 23% in the same period. Canada's up whatever, 8% or whatever. So you, no question, your market, is, the US market is clearly outperforming and it's doing that to the rest of the world. Like if I put in the Nikkei here, and by the way, the Nikkei usually um, marks major tops with the US market. I don't see anything there I like, and that's a real problem for me. I continue to think Japan's the bomb in the world where uh, when, when their market ends up uh, pulling back, they have so much debt and they have so much um, 
they have so many other problems, demographics and everything else. I think that that will prove to be a weight on the world. And then if we look at the DAX, this is the German market, and it's trying to get back up to, you know, above zero for a gain going back almost three years. Now, the uptrend is still clearly continuing here. It has broken. If you just use these two highs, you can see that would bring us in somewhere around here. So it's trying to get back up there. And if I just go to something like France, uh, you know, trying to break through the prior highs, kind of same levels as the Canadian market up 6%. And if we go to the Shanghai, you know, that chart doesn't look very optimistic either. And if we go to the Cosby, and, and the reason I just want to bring this up is because the U.S. trades with the rest of the world. Half of the S&P 500 is export-oriented. So if, this is, if these are the charts from the rest of the world and they start breaking down even more, um, I think there's some concern there. Now, uh, there are some optimistic markets, and interestingly enough, they're commodity-related markets, but commodity prices continue to struggle. So here's Australia, um, our good friends in Russia, and our good friends in Brazil. Uh, and as we watch these markets, you know, though the, these are quite odd, I think, because they're all commodity related markets. So is Canada. And yet uh, the other three are moving, but the, the Canadian one is not. So that's all of these add up to quite an odd compilation of global picture. And again, I, I'm not expecting that they go lockstep, but my main point would be that none of the other major economies like France, Germany, um, UK um, are holding up. And if I just uh, look at uh, transports as an example, actually to do transports, I'm gonna go right into the transport stocks. And what I wanna talk about here, is there's a, an, a very interesting setup happening this week that hasn't been happening that is starting to happen, and I think it's important to be aware of. So the railroads see this uptrend line here on the relative strength. This is Union Pacific. And it's since about June 1st, it started to break down, and that's a bit of an oddity. And I think we all know that CSX had bad numbers this morning. So the PPOs have been heading lower down here in the bottom right-hand corner. And up a little bit farther here, the scooter ranking is at its lowest level in a couple of years. Now, that doesn't mean the end of the world. In 2017, it got down there. But what I want to point out is that if, as we go through these charts, actually, I'm just going to go get one more chart right now, and it doesn't really matter which one. When we go through the three indexes for uh, ticker symbols here, dollar DJ USRR, the railroads, one of the things I don't want to see on a weekly chart is this uptrend breaking and i'll explain why in just a second um and it's breaking this week and i've been watching it and if you followed my um canadian market or my canadian te technician market review you'll know that i've been watching this for a while but this is a pretty important indicator uh, dollar dj usrr 2019 we're just going to store it in a regular list here um, I'll try and put this out in a blog article later, but when we roll out this tape a little bit wider, in 2015, this was a pretty good indicator that things were breaking down and that marked the start of our fall into 2016. Now, if I put the US market underneath that, just the S&P 500 or whatever, That'll be fine. We'll just do a solid line. And we want to put um, a little bit of height on it. Let's go with one. And, and the point I want to make here on this is that the downturn that we had um, in 2015 started in May of 2015. And it lines up pretty well with the top of, of the railroads when the railroads started to underperform. So they've been uptrending for almost three, four years now. And 
Now all of a sudden we're starting to get railroad underperformance. Now one day doesn't make a big deal, but I would just say, I wouldn't ignore it. I think it's a pretty important piece of information. And, and what I want to get from that is, you know, if, if the railroads are underperforming by this amount of money and, and those things have a pretty solid um, revenue stream, right? When they, when the railroads are moving, uh, they're moving steel, they're moving cars, they're moving raw materials, they're moving iron ore. When everything is moving in the railroads, this is a pretty bullish setup. So uh, when they stop moving, I, that's what I want to be aware of. And so I think this is a critical point. Now, I also want to point out that the, Airlines are are making an up move today, and I, I I don't have any correlation of an airline up move on anything else. So um, I get the feeling it's going to be a false breakout, but I can't call that right now because that's not what the signals are. But here's the downtrend in airlines, and the airlines have done nothing for years, right? This this chart goes back to 2015. Airlines are flat. Uh, 277 here and we're currently at 280 so let's just call it flat for five years not not really a heartbeat there so if they were going to start to move that might be interesting not sure if that's what's going to happen but the airlines didn't perform particularly well in the 2015-2016 slowdown and so uh, one of the economic markers for me is that if the railroads aren't going to be able to perform I don't expect that the rest of the transports are going to either and so that's one of the things that I'm bringing to your attention today mostly because this line broke this week now uh, the the relative strength trend line on the railroads broke this week. And the only other one we have, of course, in the group is trucking. And that one has been a disaster. Um, they've been sloped down for a while. I'm going to zoom in on this final part here over here on the right hand side. And the reason for the zoom in is they're actually getting to the point where they might be a buy. And a lot of these truckers are down 40 and 50%. Uh, let's just zoom in even more here, three. Okay, so with that, what we want to keep track of here is a couple of things that I'm going to draw an annotation line here on the PPO. And if it can get above the red trend line above zero, because it just keeps stalling out at this zero level, that would be an important place to watch. Now, I, I don't expect it to do that. I actually think if the railroads are going to break down, it's going to be pretty hard on trucking. Um, but the, the downtrend that we've had in four or five months here on relative strength for the rails looks like it's trying to break. Maybe I should just widen that out a little bit and go with a line, something like that. But the, the point being, if the railroads can't outperform, um, I'm not expecting that truckers are going to have any more freight to haul either. But trucking usually picks up. Um, as one of the first indicators of the economy. So this is an important inflection point. And again, the transports might not show weakness if both the trucking and the airlines start to pick up, but the rails roll over. But I think the rails are a better story for economic importance. So uh, just going to mark that and drop it in my chart list. And the idea... Again, the idea is just to be aware that there is a trend change starting to take place and I'm not trying to scare anybody. Now, we're going to cut to a commercial and then I'm going to come back and go through all these individual charts. We're going to go through 20 charts in 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Uh, but I, I do want to tell you to watch the commercial because I'm in Chicago um, on Tuesday speaking at the um, expo there and this commercial will take you right there. But if you'd like to come and hear me, I'd look forward to that. Today's market volatility provides savvy traders and active investors with an abundance of profitable opportunities. At the Traders Expo Chicago, July 21st through 23rd, dozens of the most respected traders in the world, including Rick Santelli, John Najarian, Tom Sosnoff, Linda Rashke, and Ralph Acampora, will explain how they're adapting their strategies and share the specific trading opportunities they've identified in equities, commodities, forex, futures, and cryptocurrencies. Claim your free pass to join them at chicagotradersexpo.com. And we're back. And I want to kick off with, again, Union Pacific. So this chart is just starting to break its trend line, broke the relative strength about uh, a month ago and is starting to roll over. I think that's a pretty important decision. And now just jumping through these, here's Norfolk Southern. And you can see the trend line is still holding. Scooter ranking is starting to let go. And just to be clear, these railroads have been 
in the top half of performance for the last uh, three or four years. So when they start to break trend, I think it's a pretty important trend break. And uh, the full stochastic is just going down to 50. Now, if it was to bounce here, that's what happens in a bull market. If it fails here, that's a bigger deal. And so I'm a little bit more worried, again, that the big picture is starting to break down on these transports. Um, so here's Expeditors International. And, you know, the PPO just suggests to me that it's going to start breaking down here. This is another trucking um, company. Here's uh, Matson, and I think they do transport on the Mississippi River, if I'm not mistaken. They have a lot of cargo ships that go up and down the, the river. Um, but their relative strength line here is getting very close to breaking this horizontal trend. So that's just one to watch, but it could also break out to the upside. It's sitting at a very important inflection point for me um, on the PPO. So you've got an uptrend here, a downtrend here. Does it turn up or does it break down from here? And anyway pretty slippery slope we're on. I think it's an important place to watch all of these transports. And again, if the transports are starting to break down, that's that's um, part of the Dow Jones theory and somebody called it, yeah, theory, not fact. And I just want to make sure that uh, for me, again, once the railroads start to fail, that's a bigger picture issue. And you can see that we've had the railroads kind of pull back before the full stochastic has dipped before. But the big issue for me is this relative strength trend line of four years breaking. And CSX is clearly cracking down here. And there's a downslope trend in momentum here, which is fine. But it's when it goes below zero, like it did in 2015, that kind of marked the top. So is this imminent? No. But is it something to keep track of? I think it is. Here's Canadian National Rail. And again, these companies are called Canadian National, but a huge amount of their volume is through the states. Um, so this, this company literally is making new highs this week. PPO is sitting right at, uh, you know, just kind of a lower high level here. But the relative strength line doesn't go back two years, but it goes back a year and a half and is starting to break down. So a little bit of a concern there. Looking at um, GATX, uh, this one is commercial vehicles, and you could just see downsloping relative strength here. Scooter ranking has not failed, but the PPO is right at zero. Any sort of breakdown here would be another uh, problematic sign. Canadian Pacific had blowout numbers. They went exactly the opposite way. They were up almost 7 or 8% or something yesterday. It was a big move. Um, and their relative strength uptrend continues. And one of the reasons that uh, the this particular railway is doing so well is they're hauling a lot of oil by rail instead of pipe. So um, Kansas City Southern uptrend is broken here. It was only a nine month uptrend, but it's starting to break. And this hasn't been a great performer either. You know, all the other charts were pretty steep up. This charts really hasn't done much in five years. Briefly got above the five year high, struggled the, right after the first week. And it now looks like it's breaking down and you've got this lower uh, high in momentum. So that one looks a little damaged. Uh, UPS, I think we all know the issues around the freight companies and the word Amazon. Um, Amazon trying to do their own stuff. And so these companies have been hit right at the downsloping trend line here. We'll see if there's any power. But when your full stochastic rolls over at 50, that would be a problem. So we want to watch and see if it's got the ability to bounce up. But again, this has been dead money for almost three years. So Okay, CH Robinson Worldwide, one of the largest uh, refrigerated freight dudes. Um, you've got a downslope here in relative strength. That's been going on for a while. I've been talking about this on my other uh, weekend market review. And this is almost 100 bucks here and down to $77 in late May on the May lows. But this hasn't been able to get back above its 40-week moving average really since going back to last year. So that looks like a problem to me and it's downtrending. Now, if this is going to start to buck up here and get above this downsloping trend line, it would make me more interested, not big time interested, but more interested. Okay, United Airlines, and this is where I start to say there's a little bit of a deviation going on with something happening in the airlines. So the airlines are making new uh, 2019 highs, goes back to pretty much December in this particular case, but the PPO has bounced off zero and is looking like it wants to start to turn up. I don't have any explanation for it, um, but the price action is telling us to at least pay attention here. At least United's had somewhat of an uptrend on the big picture. It's been jogging sideways for well, really since the September highs. So let's not get too 
impressed by it. Um, you know, we've got software companies that have doubled since then. So, but this has gone sideways. Um, Landstar, another trucker, and we see a downtrend here and a downsloping on the PPO. Is this going to roll over right here? Good question, but that's what I probably would expect. And the full scale seems to be waning as it gets up here. Uh, looking at rider transportation systems, you know, big trucking leasing company. Uh, I, I can't call that an uptrend. And we've got this uh, sitting just below zero. The real question is, could it turn up here? Sure, it could. Uh, I just think if you've got overall weakness in freight, this peep or this full stochastic, if it was to turn down here, would just kind of tell you what you think you already knew, which was a downtrend. And again, it's the it's the railroads this week that start to give me pause on the rest of the transports. Kirby is uh, marine transportation. They've been down sloping for a little bit here, even though the Baltic dry index is going up. Uh, Delta Airlines, this is one of the stunning ones. Here's a breakout to new 52 week highs, charts taken off. Maybe this thing can make a run. It hasn't done anything for, you know, really two or three years. And um, the airline index, as I mentioned, has been a, a uh, flat mess for a while. Hard, hard to make money in something going sideways for five or six years. This is one of the first signs that a railroad is going to do something. So I think you could buy the breakout, but I think the real question is, um, you know, uh, you have to take the breakout and you have to buy the trade. And then if the trade breaks down, you just set your stop and, and let it take you out if it's wrong. But you've got this big downtrend here in love, uh, Southwest Airlines and can it start to break to the upside and maybe what happens is with all of these 737 Max is pulled out of the system it's reduced um, uh, available seats pushed up the revenue per passenger mile and all of a sudden these charts are going to start to break out that's just a guess but it's something like that uh, JB Hunt, uh, you got a big downslope here on the PPO and it's making a higher low here on the PPO and it looks like it wants to start to go. Look at the volume coming in this week. This is still making lower highs and lower lows, so let's not get too excited. We saw the same sort of surge early in 2019, but we're still below the 40-week moving average. I would say that the relative strength that's been sloping down for four months is all of a sudden starting to improve. And if we could start to see Hunt uh, take off to the upside. This is a massive trucking company. So um, again, if that could kick in, that would be great. JetBlue, uh, this one has broken the downtrend already, spent about four weeks jogging sideways. Perhaps it can actually make the corner and start to head up. Uh, again, I think uh, PPO above zero, that suggests good things ahead. And you know, you could probably set your stop at 18 bucks and, and see if this thing will start to fly. Um, Alaska Group, Big downtrend here. Uh, you'll notice it was the, kind of the support area here at the highs, and now it's the resistance area going all the way across. Uh, PPO right at zero. If this was going to fail, this is where we'd expect it to fail. Uh, American Airlines pushing above this downsloping trend line for the first time. Again, uh, breaking a trend line is different than breaking through support and resistance, which is horizontal. Uh, but getting through a trend line is at least changing the trend. And so this is trying to push back up here. Relative strength hasn't broken out yet, but we do have an uptrending PPO gently saying the momentum is starting to improve. Whether or not it can actually pop to the upside is interesting, but it might be on the back of these reduced air miles or air available seats. FedEx, this chart, um, on the low down here, I said this is a nice entry just because you've got previous support at this level. Um, it, if it can rally out of here, great. And if it fails, you can set your stop nice and close. It almost looks like it wants to start to break through this red downsloping trend line here. And perhaps that can take off to the upside. And if that was the case, I think that's a pretty bullish scene. I think I've got one more. Um, Snyder National, huge trucking company, Orange Trucks. You might see them driving down the road. Um, really big pullback here, and we're trying to hold their IPO low. So it it um, IPO'd, pulled back, went on a bit of a run. It's been downtrending for almost a year. Uh, so the real question is, does this low hold or do we go lower? So far, the PPO is grinding below zero. So all that to say that the the railroads start to look to me like an important clue that we probably might struggle in the second half of 2019, not tomorrow, but we might start to struggle in 2019. 
I do have one chart um, that I like to show, and I'm just going to go get my favorites here. And in my top 10 to watch, uh, the reason I want to show this, uh, well, while I'm talking, the market's obviously following uh, my railroad presentation because it's literally gapped down. Um, so I had this big uptrend line starting to break, and the, PP, the MACD on here was starting to head down and break out of this triangle from the June low and starting to drop. Here's the Comp Q breaking through. The Russell has broken through its 20 day moving average, and the TSX hasn't been able to do anything. So maybe we're at the start of the correction I've been looking for. It looks like gold wants to go higher. So um, those stocks have been continuing to perform even while gold's been sideways for a week. So might be more price action there. And the US dollar is still trying to break out above this. Now, if I widen this out just for a couple of minutes, uh, the, this is the chart that I'd like you to see. So this big uptrend on the S&P is starting to crack. Now, the 20-day moving average is down here, call it 29.80. This is a 60-minute chart. Um, but this big triangle that we built in momentum has been building lower highs and higher lows, and all of a sudden it looks to me like we're breaking out to the downside. NASDAQ, same thing, is struggling here. The Russell is rolling over, TSX uh, flat at best. So all of these charts are starting to come in. Now here's oil. Um, it, it had been rallying above its 20 day moving average. It's now below it. And this is a rough estimate. So it's a hundred period moving average on the 60 minute chart, roughly six hours a day. So it's the 18 period moving average or whatever. Um, and here's GLD and it's trying to make a push higher. And if that could do that, I think that's a train you want to get on. So. All of that to suggest, um, again, the bulls are out there yelling and screaming, just wake up and smell the coffee, ride this market higher. And I'm suggesting some of the indicators like transports, like railways have been an important clue as to what's going on. Doesn't mean the airlines can't take off on their own and that would be a big surprise. But again, um, Boeing restricting the seat miles here, all of a sudden that would change the, the price pressure on airlines. And again, they'd have less flights, but they'd have um, higher passenger revenues. So that would be a big difference. Um, getting back to the dashboard here, you know, looks so severe on that, uh, on the chart I just show, showed you with that big down bar on the S&P 500, um, we're down 12 points. So let's not uh, get too scared here. This market is still got a lot of strength underneath it. And the only thing that's really breaking down hard is the Russell. So as I go forward, um, you know, what I'm watching for is to see um, as these earnings periods come out, uh, I want to watch and just make sure that uh, we start to see the, the indexes hold up here. Obviously, I'd expect the, the big large cap tech stocks to do well. So until they report, I really don't think the market's going to break a whole lot lower. Um, but, you know, just on my intraday charts here, these are 10 minute charts. They're starting to break down on the daily. Again, this 30% move off the lows doesn't mean it can't continue. Look at this big move we had um, to start out here, it ran up for four months, you pull back and now you try to make a higher high. Um, you know, there'll, there'll probably be some Elliotitians saying we still got a, another wave to go, but the third wave can't be the shortest wave either. So I, to me, it looks uh, pretty much wrapped up there. So anyway, on a weekly view, you can see we're trying to break through those prior highs. If we stalled here, it wouldn't be a surprise. And we might just pull back for a couple of weeks and take off. But the railroads tell me it might be bigger than that. So thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs live on Wednesdays and Fridays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 7.30 a.m. Pacific time on Stock Charts TV. You can also catch replays on the Stock Charts YouTube channel. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.